Hola a todos, bienvenidos a mi canal, eh, a este video muy especial donde tenemos a un, un invitado que seguramente conocen, este como Clement, es el creador de Algo Expert, también lo encuentran en su canal en YouTube, el cual voy a dejar en la descripción. Me voy a mover al inglés porque vamos a hacer el video en inglés, entonces si, si hablas inglés, por favor apoya traduciendo o aportando este, subtítulos, este, si se puede, es una labor muy difícil, entonces aprecio si puedes ayudarme con eso. Este, pero por lo pronto nos vamos a mover al inglés para comenzar. Hello everyone, my name is Jorge, welcome to this video. We have a really special guest today, his name is Clement. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and he's also uh, uh, one of the founders of AlgoExpert.io. Uh, so don't forget to check him out. And uh, hey Clement, uh, uh, would you please introduce yourself? I'm really glad to have you in my channel and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hola a todos, me llamo Clemente y estoy... No, I'm joking, I'm going to speak in English. Uh, <laughs> Excellent, That's, that was great, don't worry. You're, you're making me want to speak... You're making me want to practice my Spanish because I haven't uh, spoken Spanish since, like, high school. But, um, <laughs> no, so my, my name is Clement. Uh, I think Jorge introduced me really well. Um, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about all things related to software engineering, coding interviews, and entrepreneurship. I'm the co-founder of Algo Expert, a website that helps people prepare for coding interviews. And before that, I worked at Google and Facebook as a software engineer. And before that, I had just graduated college and a coding boot camp. I'm happy to talk about that more if you want. Wow, that's that's great. Uh, awesome. So, uh, hey, Clement, thanks for your introduction. I, I really appreciate it. And yeah, we, we can definitely talk about those topics. So everyone, uh, just for you to know, like now this video is going to be focused about talking about Clement's experience and we're going to try to give you some advice on uh, like uh, those interviewing experiences and your background. I think that's pretty valuable. And uh, well, uh, let's start with the first questions uh, that I have for you. Uh, so Clement, how would you describe uh, doing like this? Uh, so I understand you did like a coding bootcamp. So how was that transition into uh, getting into the software engineering like world? And uh, how did you prepare uh, for interviews uh, at that time? So uh, when you landed uh, your first job at Google? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that, about how that experience was and if you have like any advice uh, for people who's looking to, to apply and interview into these companies? Yeah, so maybe I'll separate that into two answers. The first one about just how did it feel and, you know, like, how was the transition? I think this is this might be similar to your, your experience when you joined Amazon, but joining a big tech company like Google, especially coming out of a coding boot camp where I had just been coding for about six months, was a really like crazy experience. Everything felt so new and everything felt so so much more intense and so much more real, but it was also great because I was in that learning mindset and I was just able to learn a ton and, and you know, really um, improve my software engineering skills at Google. But now to the other question of how did I prepare and how do you get into the companies and all that, I did a lot of coding interview preparation. Um, and when I say a lot, for me, it was really condensed in a short period of time right after my coding boot camp, or you know, the month or two after. I condensed it specifically in a period of 10 days when I oh. had gotten an interview with uh, the recruiter at Google, and I had the on-site interviews roughly 10 days later. And during those 10 days, it's literally all I did. Like, I would wake up, I had my routine, I would wake up very early and I would work all the way to like 10 p.m. and do the same thing over and over again, just prepping for the coding interviews. No way. So uh, so during these 10 days, uh, is it fair to say that you invested around 12 hours a day, like just studying and practicing? I would say that, it, that that would be a fair like assessment. It's always hard to say because, you know, you obviously have to take some breaks just yes. for your own sanity and everything, but that would be fair to say. Now, just to be clear, I'm not 
advising people to do that or I'm not saying that that is the best way to prepare because you can do the exact same thing except one hour a day over three months or over a year, right? And yeah. that might even be better because you might be able to absorb the knowledge better. Um, for me, I found myself where suddenly I had scheduled these interviews and I was like, wait a second, I'm not, I'm not prepared for them because I had really <laughs> had that experience a few weeks before with another company where I thought I was prepared. I was like, yeah, I think I'm pretty good at these coding challenges. And I went in <laughs> and I was not prepared. And then I was like, okay, I'm not going to remake that mistake. Wow, that sounds, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, like everyone has like their own pace. Like, as you said, for you, it was like this really intense, like 10 days. And uh, for me, it was like six months. And uh, it wasn't as much time like every day. I mean, that's, uh, I, I say, I honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that, but I'm glad that you made it. And uh, I, I had another question for you. Uh, so when you yep. were preparing, um, what, uh, how many, like, you don't have to, like, say about what the specific resources if you don't want to, but... Did you use like multiple uh, resources to prepare or just one resources being like a, a coding platform, like books, like uh, uh, maybe people like a, like, in, you know, like a mocking interviews, uh, that kind of thing. Like how, how many like resources do you remember using in your uh, uh, prep stage? Yeah, so this is funny because this is the story of when I came up with the idea for Algo Expert, but I, back in my day, it's not that long ago, but it was like three <laughs> years ago now, back in my day, there weren't that many popular resources out there. There were a couple that were really like well known as the staple resources. So I got one book, Cracking the Coding Interview, and oh, man. I, I, you know, read the entire book and it was really frustrating because the book was written in Java. I had never written Java. I had written <laughs> JavaScript and Python. So it was really confusing from that point of view, but it was still a good book. And I, I, I recommend that book. It's a great book. Um, but that's what I used as my sort of foundational prep work. And then I would go online on Google and I would look up, you know, like this question in cracking the coding interview that I don't understand. And I would look it up. And I would look, go on YouTube, see if there was a video. I would go on Wikipedia, see if there was an explanation of the algorithm. And I would kind of piece together all these things. And I would go on tangents where, you know, you're on Wikipedia reading about graphs and suddenly you click on Dijkstra's algorithm and it brings you down like a whole other path, you know, that you can kind of learn from. But it was very frustrating because it felt like I was going in these endless, like, cycles of looking stuff up and mm -hmm. you know i didn't really have anything like served to me uh in a very guided and streamlined way and um the videos were also very inconsistent on youtube and all that but that's what i used to prep that was my 12 hours a day during those 10 days wow. and then right afterwards that's when i told myself like there's gotta be a better way to prep than what i did especially for these interviews that are so important and that's when i came up with the idea of algo expert wow, wow. oh man that that sounds tough uh that sounds uh, i i don't know how to describe it uh so i have a a, a couple of questions for you so one thing i want to go a little bit deeper in about how you build Al algo expert and how you started working on that because of course Uh, my perception is that you need a lot of knowledge and, you know, like algorithms to actually uh, being able to develop a product like that. Uh, but before that, I wanted to ask you like one last question. Um, and it's something yeah. I, 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 I identified with when you mentioned that you had a, a like an experience before Google that that you had like some sort of uh, interviews that, that that you did. It wasn't as good. And um I, I wanted to ask, like, how how does it feel, like, to know that perhaps, like, you weren't prepared at a time, and how did that, like, give you a motive to actually learn and get better? And wh where I want to get uh, with this is that uh, at least I have experience, like, in my experience, I have failed a lot of times before getting that that uh, offer letter. And uh, how was it for you? How does it feel, like, maybe? Uh, we we stumble or we fail and, and then you keep going like how, how was that for you yeah i think there are really 
two things to realize about failure, especially if we're talking about coding interviews, but this also applies you know, to all aspects of life. Mm -hmm. When you fail, you have to analyze the failure. Did you fail because you messed up and like you hadn't prepared or you did something wrong that you could have done well? If mm -hmm. yes, identify the reasons you failed and fix them. And that was the case for the um, interviews that I had failed before the Google interviews. If you fail for external reasons, like reasons that were beyond your control, you did your best and you still fail, that's part of life and you just have to pick yourself back up and keep moving forward. And that also happened with me. Um, like when I interviewed at Google, I interviewed at Two Sigma, which is a hedge fund in New York, a tech hedge fund, uh, the day afterwards. And I felt really prepared for that interview. And I felt like I did better at my Two Sigma interviews than at my Google interviews, except in a systems design interview. They gave me oh. a systems design interview at Two Sigma, and I was not prepared for that at all. I did yeah. not do well on that, but the algorithm interviews I did really, really well. I think I did much better than even at Google. And I didn't get the offer at Two Sigma. And that was a disappointing one because I felt like I had done everything I could, but you just got to pick yourself back up and, you know, move forward. Uh, wow, Clement, uh, thanks for sharing that. I mean, uh, it sounds like a really intense experience. I guess a lot of people like uh, we go through similar things like we fail and then it's hard uh, to get back up. And uh, I, I think what you say makes a lot of sense. Like if you analyze why it happened, then you can take that as a learning. And especially if it's not your fault, if it's not your fault it's because of an external reason, then we don't have to feel bad about that, right? Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just about moving forward and learn and then do better. So uh, thanks for sharing that. 100%. And now, yeah, uh, definitely. And now that we're talking about that, so, uh, you had like this uh, experience, you learned uh, uh, coding, you practice, uh, prepare for the algorithm interviews, got yourself a job at Google. Then uh, I know that you then move uh, onto Facebook for a little while and uh, then you decided to fully invest uh, your time into your own company, which, uh, which is Algo Expert. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about that. So. Uh, First, like in the aspect of, of the technical uh, knowledge that you need to have to actually develop a product like this with all the videos and with all the problems, um, how much, let's say, training or uh, how, how much like algorithms you have to know, how, how good do you need to be to be able to start working on that? And, and what advice would you give to people that want to get good at algorithms? Because I mean, it's clear to me that you're really good at, in, in this thing. So, so how is that experience? Like how much have you been practicing since you started? Like, uh, uh, yeah, could you t tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about building the Algo Expert platform for the content, like the, the, the actual product that we provide, like with yeah. the questions and the videos, you obviously need algorithm knowledge because you're teaching these algorithm questions. For the actual platform itself, mm -hmm. like the code execution engine and the website, the UI, all of that, there's less algorithms and more just like pure software engineering. And, you know, we can talk about like front end, back end, all that stuff. There are some bits and pieces that involve algorithms. And I actually made a video on this recently, like the questions list page on Algo Expert is pretty heavy on algorithms as, as far as wow. like implementation goes. But overall, like I would say it's just, yeah, the majority of it is just like software engineering, you know, building software. And that's a skill that you develop by you know, obviously learning in college or coding boot camp, but also then, you know, working in the industry and building actual software. Um, to the other yeah. point that you said about like, how do you practice algorithms and just like get really good at them and all that. Like for me, since I've been doing this now for three years, like living and breathing, you know, <laughs> algorithms, because it's literally my job now with this product, I kind of stay sharp on them just through that, like my work mm -hmm. involves me doing or my doing algorithm problems. Mm -hmm. um, so the consistent practice is definitely key. 
Wow, well, that's amazing. And now that you mentioned practice, I guess that's like the trick because uh, uh, I feel that people uh, like uh, I, like like me in this example, right? So I studied, I got good at algorithms, I landed a job offer at Amazon, and then I kind of like forget about it. And then when I left Amazon, I interviewed again. And I had to practice again because I wasn't as sharp because I'm not using, I'm not solving problems as frequently as I used to. Uh, so I guess yeah. what you're saying, it makes a lot of sense. Um, wow. Uh, so I got uh, lucky I like yeah. when I, when I interviewed at Facebook, because when I interviewed at Facebook, since I was still working on algo expert on the side, when I was at Google, um, oh. I had that practice. I, I basically did not have to practice that much for the algorithm portion of the Facebook interviews. I, I did practice a little bit. I did some questions mm -hmm. on my own platform on Algo Expert, but for the most part, I already had been doing the practice just by like creating Algo Expert. Wow, well, that's great. <laughs> Bueno amigos, esa fue la primera parte de esta colaboración con Clement. Realmente les recomiendo que vayan a checar su canal, que vayan a checar este, su contenido y que pues se den una vuelta por algo expert. El enlace lo voy a dejar en la descripción. Y eh, qué les puedo decir también, eh, este video no se acaba aquí, es el fin de la primera parte. Hay una segunda parte donde continúa la conversación y hablamos más acerca de su experiencia como emprendedor emprendiendo en algo expert. Entonces... Estén pendientes a ese video y nos vemos en una próxima ocasión. Chao.